Hello, uh, my name is Dr. Juliet Hahn. Uh, this is August 20th, Saturday. This is a series of videos for my students in Chem 111 General Chemistry class and Chem 335 Organic Chemistry class at Bruton Parker College. So this video is to replace my being there on August 22nd, Monday. So where am I going to be on August 22nd, Monday? I will be doing a presentation at the National American Chemical Society meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I had previously scheduled for this uh, meeting presentation, so instead of being in class, I will be there. So uh, what you're going to do in place of meeting me on August 22nd, Monday, you're going to view the next few PowerPoint videos, and then uh, you will meet again on August 24th, Wednesday, for our next class, our next lecture class. So um, some of the material in the PowerPoints I've already covered in our second class of the semester, on August uh, 17th, Wednesday. Some of the material I will also cover again when we meet on August 24th, Wednesday, with additional examples. Uh, you can ask questions and so on. So um, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to view the, the couple of videos. And then when we meet on August 24th, at the end of class, I will ask the hi questions. Hi. And uh, homework in class. So um, we'll cover the material that I will cover in this video. In these next couple of PowerPoint videos, uh, I'll go over any questions that you have on Wednesday before we do the homework in class. OK, so I'll see you on Wednesday, August 24th. and. Uh, and have a good um, Monday. See you. So uh, I said I actually did this at my first uh, presentation uh, in class and uh, I, I just wanted to say a little bit about myself. A uh, part of it is because uh, studies have shown that people uh, tend to learn better from people that they actually believe have the authority to be teaching them them things. So um, I just went over uh, that I was in the top 1% in GPA when I was at Irmo High School, from which I graduated. I was in the top 3% on the PSAT. Um, I have a BS from the University of South Carolina in Columbia with a 3.8 out of 4.0 GPA. I have a doctorate from the State University of New York at Stony Brook. And I did postdoctoral work at Columbia University and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, those universities being uh, not quite uh, MIT and Harvard, but uh, being very prestigious universities, just a shade below uh, MIT and Harvard. Uh, I also have more than 10 years college level teaching, all post PhD, uh, mostly organic and general chemistry classes, and class sizes of 10 to 300 in one. So I actually do know what I'm talking about, uh, and um, you can be, uh, you can rest assured that I'm not too stupid to teach you. Um, and there's some additional information. Okay, so uh, we're doing organic chemistry, and uh, in organic chemistry, we're actually looking at some molecules that you probably have seen before. So here is pentyl penicillin, and you're all uh, you all know penicillin. I'm sure you've heard of penicillin before. Uh, and here is taxol. So taxol is my uh, anti-cancer uh, breast cancer. Uh, pharmaceutical. And here's codeine, which is an analgesic, a pain relieving compound. So these are all molecules that you uh, get from organic chemistry. So organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon compounds. 
So all of these compounds have carbon as the backbone of the molecule. So there's lots of carbon in these molecules. And uh, you can see why organic chemistry might be useful, because they are involved in making all of these pharmaceuticals. So we're talking about carbon. So there's more than one type of carbon. There's carbon-12, there's carbon-14. And these two are different isotopes of the same element carbon. So isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. Mass number is the sum of protons and neutrons in an atom, and the mass average of the natural abundance of the isotopes for that element. So this is the mass number, and this is the atomic number. The atomic number, this number right here, this right here, gives you the number of protons and also for neutral atoms the number of electrons. When you look at things in the periodic table, you get something that looks like this. So this is my atomic number and this is my atomic mass number. The reason why you have uh, not just 12, but 12.011, is because this number takes, the mass number takes into account the mass average of all the isotopes of that element that occur naturally. And so you have a, 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 a primarily carbon 12, and then you have a little bit of carbon 12, uh, carbon 13, and carbon 14. So you end up with this uh, averaged mass. So you can use a periodic table to come up with the electron configuration of atoms. Um, and uh, basically what you can do is if you look at the periodic table and you know how to count, you should be able to do the electron configuration for any atom. This is table 1.1 from uh, the latest edition of the Wade textbook. Um, I'm also showing over here. And what they did in that table is they actually separated out the subshells. So the px and py orbitals of the p subshell, they separated out and showed individually. But over here, I'm showing the electron configuration that normally that you normally see. This is the normal electron configuration that you normally see when somebody asks you for the uh, for the electron configuration. The valence electrons are electrons in the outermost shell of the atom. So in carbon, the outermost shell is the second shell, the principal quantum number two. So those would be the valence electrons. So if I ask you for the valence electron configuration for carbon, you would give me 2s2, 2p2. And then if I ask you how many valence electrons do I have in carbon, you would count up the number of electrons. So you have two electrons here and another two electrons here to give you a grand total of four valence electrons for carbon. So nitrogen has five valence electrons. Here are the valence electrons for oxygen, six valence electrons. Uh, the valence electrons for fluorine, seven valence electrons. Valence electrons for neon, eight valence electrons. So here's a periodic table. And uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of features about the periodic table. So this number over here is the principal quantum number that's also the shell number. So all of these numbers here, so one, two, three, those are the principal quantum numbers or shell numbers. Those are the numbers that you're seeing when you, when you do the electron configuration uh, of any uh, element. That's the first number that you see. These numbers up here, these are group numbers. So uh, the, this is a group, this is group number one, uh, this is group number four, and so on. So when you have a periodic table, each move to the right on the periodic table adds one electron. So the, uh, the electron that you add is based on the period number, the period number, and the block that you're in. So if you go from the sodium to the magnesium, you are adding one, uh, one electron 
from sodium to magnesium. And the electron that you're adding is a third period electron. So you would have in your electron configuration a three. The other thing you want to take into account is the block of the periodic table. So this, these two uh, groups are the S block. These are your P block elements. These are my D block elements. So when you move one position to the right from sodium to magnesium, you are adding one S block uh, el uh, electron in the third period. So this would be going from here to here, that would give me 3S2 and so on. So when we're doing electron configurations, we have to take into account the uh, some rules for electron filling. So down here is the energy diagram. Oops, there goes my arrow. Here's the energy diagram for uh, any element. So the lowest energy is 1s. And then you go up in energy. So as you go up this way, you're going to higher energy. So the 1s is lower energy, 2s is higher energy, and then 2p is higher energy. And then the px, py, and pz are degenerables. They have the same energy, and so they are all showing up at the same energy level. The alpha principle states that you fill the lowest energy orbitals first. So that means that if you're adding electrons, you would start adding electrons at the 1s orbital, and then you would add electrons to the 2s. You would not start with the 2p and then add electrons at the 1s. So you would actually start here at the 2p. Sorry, you would start here at the 1s before you start adding electrons to the 2s, and then you would add electrons to the 2p, 2, uh, 2p uh, orbitals and so on. So that's the alpha principle. Hun's rule says that when there are two or more orbitals of the same energy, the degenerate orbitals, electrons will go into different orbitals rather than pairing up in the same orbital. So that means that you would add your first electron here, and then you would add your second electron here, and then you would add your third electron here, and then you would add your fourth electron here you would not just add double up in 2px before spreading them out into y and z. Pauli exclusion says that you can have a maximum Pauli exclusion, a maximum of two electrons, but only if the electron spins are paired. So for instance, here I have my paired electrons. So I have that instead of having this, because that would be wrong. That's wrong. This is correct. So you have the electrons paired, so that's Pauli exclusion. 